Hi, Victory Nation. Welcome to Inside My Victory, a podcast about the church, leadership, creativity. I'm Pastor Gene. And I'm Pastor Kelly. And you can follow along with the notes we provided for you at my website, kellystickle.com. And you're going to need those notes, I'm just telling you. Yeah. <laughs> and if you have any questions or anything you would like us to discuss, please email us at leadership at myvictory.ca. Yeah, I'd encourage every leader, every pastor to take advantage of this. If you have a question that is specific, and I'm sure uh, this podcast and the ones that we're doing in this series are are going to provide questions or provoke pre- questions, but if you have a question that is specific to your situation you'd like us to take on, please email us again at leadership at myvictory.ca. We would love to take it on. You know, I was going to ask you how you are, but I'm not. I'm going to just tell you, I think this would make a great book. Well, that would be funny. <laughs> yeah, okay. It would be totally a Totally off fun. the subject, but I'm just thinking that, so I thought I would just say Just because I didn't have enough to do, but I will I get know. on it. Yeah. You should do this. You're <laughs> just good. not, you know, don't be slacking. All right. Today, <laughs> let's flesh out the next comparison of more and less, and this one is really going to be interesting. It's more charismatic and less attractional. And I can hear all of my critics <laughs> saying about time. I hear screeching tires. Of being like, ah, what? <laughs> Pastor Kelly is saying about time. Uh, more. No, I, I see the trend going more uh, charismatic and less attractional. And I probably, I should clarify in that. And the reason why I've got critics in this area is because I kind of did something quite different when I came here eight years ago. And for those who aren't familiar with with uh, you that did a history. lot of things different. We did a lot of things different. <laughs> I when I got here eight years ago, we we came into a church that was you know kind of it was stagnant. It was it was regressing in its attendance and its finances, and was really in 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 quite uh, a desperate situation. We came in, and it's a uh, the history of this church is it's very charismatic. And when I got here, it was very, and I use that term charismatic. And we in the church world, we use that term as you know, lots of expression of the Holy Spirit, and we had prophecy mics, and we had all, you know, we had, you know, long, drawn-out, you know, worship sessions, mm-hmm. and kind of a free-flow. Long, long drawn-out, drawn yeah, right? Long messages, <laughs> really you know, long. all that that was going on. And I came in, and I transitioned to the church to become more what is classified as attractional, and I get asked all the time, you know, Pastor Kelly, are you trying to be seeker sensitive? And I was like, well, that's better than being seeker insensitive. So yes, we are. But we became yes. what was classified. We'd be classified as an attractional church. So when I said this to my staff, you know, our staff are going, well, man, we've been transitioning the other way. What are you saying? We have to transition back. I think that you know, probably a better term would be more transformational. And less attractional. I like transformation. Um, that yeah. would be a little bit more. But I think the, the general idea is people are looking for uh, authentic, uh, real experiences with God. And I think the church as a whole, it, the, you know, the attractional church, that was a season. And I, and I get it, but I am seeing that season kind of dry up. And where eight years ago... We this was kind of rare, especially in Canada and in this area, to be an attractional church and you know to have you know the you know the band and the shorter services yeah, and the yeah. lights and the and all this kind of stuff and the excellence and all the yeah. you know the special numbers that we we do and you know secular songs in church that was that. Well, can that you is imagine? Not, can you imagine the critics in Jesus's day? Yeah, he's out by the beach for heaven's sake. We yeah. have a synagogue. Yeah, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. I so love we, what we, you're doing. We've had all that. We've had all that pushback. Yeah, we have. <laughs> and I and and we've done all of it, and it's and it's worked. But if we stay in the same methodology that we've always done, we're going to get stuck in in a rut. And it's not, it's not abnormal anymore. It's quite normal for churches all over the place, and and some churches are catching up. But I think while they're catching up, I'm looking at something else, and I'm looking at something. I've noticed different. there's a a, a more um, presence of the Holy Spirit right. in our services lately. Right. And that's intentional. That's that's very intentional. And and we're not uh again this is more and less. Yes. We're not saying we're going to throw out the attractional model at all. No, we still are on a mission. We want to we want to reach every village yes, person we do. including those who are the unchurched and we want to we want to explain it to them and bring it to down, you know, to their level to where they can experience, but we want to give them an experience and encounter with God. Yes. At, by, you know, all, all means necessary. And so we want to 
allow and set up those opportunities to be able to do that. So we're going to push in in deeper. I guess it's more deep and and less wide. And we're going to so we've, you know, introduced, you know, prayer cards and and a prayer time and a ministry time right in the middle of our music time. Mm-hmm. And every single time, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but every single time we do that, I began that I begin that prayer time with with a simple teaching, yes. an explanation as to why we're doing what and we're it's doing. It's relevant and it really it pulls people in. It doesn't push people away. It pulls people in. Right. What do you, what do you see as the greatest challenges in this whole idea of more charismatic and less attractional? I think the challenge is is that we as a church we get uh, we like labels, and uh, we label something and then it we. As soon as we label it, we put it in a box, and that's the way it's going to be. So, I even hesitated. You know, I was like, "How do I work wrestle with that that word charismatic?" Because we've created, you know, a charismatic church. We've created that label, and therefore we've boxed everybody up. And so, and and so, a charismatic church is going to see, you know, wild and crazy and and yeah. free and, and every, anything goes. And we could care less about who's in the room. We're just yeah. going to allow, you know, we're going to. I think the word transformational crazy. is more powerful because it it communicates to an unchurched person, whereas charismatic never commit. It never did connect with a, yeah. an unchurched person. <laughs> right. Well, and and we want to be able to. It, it, I want it to be charismatic. I mean, transformational, yes, but charismatic is saying. Okay, now we want to open up to all these things, but let's look at and you know the, your question again is what's the greatest challenge? I I don't want to box up charismatic in in, in an experience of what we've seen mm-hmm. or what we saw ten fifteen years I ago, agree. I or agree. what we saw you know a thousand years ago, or what we saw in the Pentecostal movement. I, you know, God moves in different ways at different times. And we need to be able to say, okay, no, hey, we want to tap into this, and people are really seeking for, for that real connection with God. Let's provide every opportunity for them. And we to have, have an obligation to, to to completely share the story. Yeah, you know, we have an obligation because if we have the hope of the world, which we do, which we do, we're obligated to how to find different ways to share that and to impact this generation. With yeah, the, and our job, and this is why I wanted to have this discussion with our staff. Our job is to is to not bring about life change. Our job is to connect people to Jesus who can bring the life change. Right. And so we want to connect people, introduce them to that relationship. Keep the focus on Jesus. And give them that experience. And so what I wanted to challenge our staff on is is and our team on is okay, let's not get stuck in the attractional model. Let's not get stuck in a certain way of doing things. Let's be open to to ways and let's really stay focused on our mission and yes. our vision and what's the best way to. And if we have to change the way we're doing it, then we change the way we're doing Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But we are solely focused on our mission Absolutely. to reach every available person. At every available time. By every available means. With the gospel of Jesus Christ. By creating churches. On church people love to attend. Love to attend.